uh, about, oh, okay. it's actually about porting parted, so it's uh, still a, a big part to do. Uh, so maybe help is a bit needed on that. And uh, the other stuff is finishing um, part, uh, porting BuzzyBox for all the network related tools. So if you want help uh, on that, uh, you, you can ask on Debian Boot or Debian BSD or also on the IRC channels. Next is you. Um, good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Sha Liu. Um, I, uh, my mentor is Anthony Folk, but you can see there are three people there. So the other two is, is the co-mentor. Um, in short, the goal of, this, uh, of my project is um, to compile packages uh, with, you can see, um, MARC equals to MIPS3 and the long sun 2F and the width MABI equals to N32. Well, to finish this job, uh, first I need to build a MIPS3 minimal um, Linux system using a CLF CLFS method. Um, the CLFS is a project to teaching people how to cross compile Linux from scratch. Uh, second, I'll demonize this system by um, building Debian. Debian's uh, packaging system includes um, uh, DPKG, APT, etc. Then I'll build packages in a stable archive one by one. Um, well, uh, now uh, I have already uh, had this uh, had uh, uh, such a minimal system with the new two chain. Uh, you can see by new two is 2.19, GCC 4.4, GDPC 2.9. And with the kernel uh, 2.6.29, um, and uh, many patches are already uh, available in um, John, John's overlay. Uh, this, uh, you know, John is a um, Gen2 developer, so um, this is his overlay. And for the to-do, um, the to-do list is much longer. I think um, first I should finish uh, building DPKG and all its dependency. Uh, then I'll demonize the file system. Third, uh, I want to try MRC equals to uh, long sun 2F. Um, four, I'll test the performance uh, between this new system and the uh, old Debian's uh, MIPS EL port. Uh, five, uh, I want to run this new system um, on uh, GDM Lib Liberty uh, 1000 netbook. Um, well, there are many things you can help with. Uh, you can test uh, this minimal system. I've already um, uploaded to this FTP. Um, oh, and you can always uh, su su subscribe to this mailing list to be part of it. And uh, there are many practical problems I've encountered in uh, working on this project. For example, um, how to ma automatically debianize the file system uh, as Debian policy manual suggests. And, um, how to efficiently get uh, all dependency source packages. Um, and uh, finally, maybe you can help me um, build a package or two. Well, um, you can see this is my um, a developer a development block. And uh, uh, this is the method I use. Uh, uh, sorry. This is the method I use. Um, uh, to build build this minimal system, and uh, the last is the home page of GDM uh, OLPH program, as you may know. Um, you know, you see uh, the last the left picture is the GDM um, net uh, GDM netbook. Uh, if you register to be one of the developer, uh, you can uh, get this netbook at a ver at a lower uh, price. And the, on the right is the the black box is the full on full on box. You can, as you can see, the size of it is um, almost the same uh, as um, uh, CD-ROM. Well, that's all. Uh, if you have something interest, you can always contact me. Thank you. So next up is uh, the project of David uh, Wendt Jr., mentored by Stephen Muller. 
the goal of this project is to create uh, tools uh, to work with the Amazon EC2 uh, system. So this system is a cloud computing system. It has nothing to do with Google or anything. Uh, the idea is that you can have hosting, and uh, this hosting can be extended on simple clicks. Say you host a website and you have one server, and suddenly you open slash dot or whatever, and you can order one one hundred servers exactly the same and load balance. Uh, it also has uses in uh, in academia where uh, it is used uh, for for computing, uh, whereas uh, universities set up uh, clusters of computer for use by other universities on demand. Uh, which is why uh, a project was initiated inside academia to create a clone of all the Amazon infrastructure with free software. Uh, so because Amazon have restrictive license on the tools they provide, we can't use them directly, legally, uh, with Eucalyptus. So uh, we've been working uh, on recreating these tools uh, with uh, free license and uh, more friendly functionalities, so that anyone can set up a cloud a cloud computing cluster at home or whatever. So the status of the project, uh, we Eucalyptus already has uh, Debian packages, but uh, these packages are not really following Debian policy. So David has been helping them to uh, create new packages that actually complies with, uh, with Debian policy. He's been helping with uh, tools to, these tools, these free tools to uh, replace the Amazon tools. He's also working uh, on porting VM Builder, which comes from Ubuntu. Ubuntu, uh, through Canonical, has a commercial partnership with Amazon. Uh, so they created uh, some specific tools which have some Ubuntu specific functionalities like working with the landscape commercial uh, man computing management, uh, which is not useful to us. So basically we wanted to work uh, with Debian, with Debian, uh, with the whole Debian environment, Xen, uh, VirtualBox, whatever is needed. Uh, the code is in Arios, fully ported to Debian. You can try it. Uh, what's left to do? Uh, we still have to port a few modules that are still a uh, little too much Ubuntu. We have to validate uh, kernels that are provided by Amazon because Amazon uh, has a set of kernels that you have to use. You can't use Debian kernels on it. So we have to validate them. And the Calypso sites, uh, there's still work done, left to be done for the to comply with Debian policy so we can have packages by the end of the summer inside the archive. You have a few links. You can follow them up to the end after the talk. Next project uh, is to port back the update manager. Uh, the update manager is this little icon that nobody looks at at the top of uh, GNOME, which tells you you have to update stuff, which you don't never read. Uh, it's useful uh, for Ubuntu, and they made a lot of customizations to support uh, the LTS and other uh, Ubuntu-specific stuff. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there is a lot of hard-coded Ubuntu dependencies inside the code. Uh, there's hardly any documentation. So we want to port it back to Debian and to make it distribution independent so that it can be used uh, by Debian or any other Debian derivative, not only Ubuntu. We wanted to have a cleaner design and uh, uh, cleanly separated between front end and back end and have the ability to extend to support specificities of other distributions, uh, such as those that are made for netbooks or specific machines. So if you don't remember, it's this piece of software. This new design is uh, comprehends front end, back end, and so and this distribution specific part, uh, so that there is no specific porting needed to port it to another distribution except writing plugins. Uh, there is uh, new documentation that will be automatically generated, and we dumped 
uh, coding synaptics with a very long command line to install stuff, and we uh, dumped it in favor of the Python APT backend that's been developed at Debian. Uh, we have some uh, automatic distribution detection and new functionality so that it works cleanlier if uh, there is no uh, GUI involved and so on. So to do uh, front ends that could work on the command line, uh, a newer daemon that works cleanlier, uh, and some integration works with Python APT reworking the interface and testing. You can help, you will look at the slides later. Uh, the last project uh, is to rework the BTS with a new modern web UI. Uh, unfortunately, Diego is uh, apparently ill. Uh, he's here, he might be come back later. Uh, he's mentored by Marga Margarita Monterola. Uh, the focus of this new project is to have uh, better usability, something to, that's easier to use, more friendly than the current BTS which uh, asks you to write mails in, the ve in a very specific syntax, uh, otherwise uh, it won't do anything. It uh, makes for easier triaging uh, inside uh, Debian. Right now, the if someone just wants to do triaging of bugs, it's very, it's very complicated. The BTS doesn't make it very easy. Uh, it makes possible to create new workflows, uh, creating as I said, the role of a triager, separate from uh, the maintainer of the package or the user. And of course, this new interface is, uh, looks nice. So right now it looks like this. Uh, you can have this list of uh, bugs. It's quite clean written with CSS and uh, standard compliant HTML in Python. Uh, that's the view of a single bug. Uh, you can uh, have any actions. The most of the regular action can be done inside the interface without resorting to email. Uh, so what's left to be done? So the some of the actions are not uh, implemented yet. Uh, Digo still has to implement them. Uh, still has to see what's, uh, what's to be taken from other BTSs. Uh, right now, the Launchpad has just been open source, so it, uh, he will look at the source code and see what's interesting to take back from them. And uh, also, he wants to integrate these new features and decide how to uh, handle the choice of having or not a user authenticate how to have them authenticate and so on. Uh, currently, the, uh, the one of the issues with having an entirely web-based uh, bug, bug tracking system is that uh, developer fears that uh, it will reduce the quality of the bug reports. On the other hand, if you force the user to authenticate and, cre and have a complicated registration process, you're sure that the most dedicated user will stay at the end and provide you probably better bug reports, so a balance has to be uh, found here. So let's have a round of applause for us, our students, which are here or not here. <laughs> so to conclude, uh, the factor of success. Uh, you have to remember that uh, not only the students are uh, to be uh, had to be regarded for this for their success. The, the developers inside Debian uh, also have work to do to make sure that their work will be successful. So how a student can turn into a future great Debian developer? First, you have to make sure that he wants to stay. So his project has to be properly integrated quickly at the end of the summer of right after. Google doesn't really care if the project is integrated at all, but we actually care and the students uh, especially care about this. We want their project to be fully integrated in the next release or uh, in the instable uh, branch. We, for this, uh, for the students to uh, feel uh, that their work would be useful and to possibly iterate over it to improve it, you have to contribute feedback to them. 
uh, the, the students doesn't have to work in their corner alone. You can contribute to their work by providing f them feedback, trying their, their trying out their project, and talking to them now face to face for those who are here. Uh, well, one thing that is interesting uh, during this past four years of this summer of code is that uh, many summer of code admins are past students who liked it here. Uh, many of the current admins actually are past students. And for example, the current uh, project leader of uh, Joomla, I think it was Joomla, was a student from the first summer of code who had actually never participated in the program before. So the, I think that uh, the Summer of Code is a great step stone for anyone to participate into open source programs. And uh, these students who successfully participate in the Summer of Code inside these organizations make great, uh, great ambassadors for the project inside different communities uh, than what the usual audience of their project is. And at Debian, I think that they help show the welcoming part of Debian. So how you can help? You can talk to our students, now physically, on, on IRC. For those that couldn't come, you have uh, this IRC channel, Debian-SOC. Uh, you can try out their project. Most of them have something to try. Uh, for next year, uh, I'd like you to think about great ideas to propose for students to do. The more ideas we have to present, the more students that we can attract. Uh, also, you can talk to current and past mentors. We have a lot of mentors uh, that participated in the program during these past four years. So you have a lot of people to talk to, talk to about what it takes to be a mentor and what's called cool about it. Also, you can help uh, admin the Summer of Code program. That's a lot of work to manage the whole program and all the mentor students involved. And uh, well, I think that the Google Summer of Code at Debian is, uh, is already quite great. So I would like to thank all the students who participated in the program this year and the past years, all the mentors who give, gave great help to all our students, the whole community at Debian who helped review project and try out this project uh, during this summer, and of course Google for uh, funding this project. They, they spend close to $5 million each year on this project uh, and funding and sponsorship and so on. So let's make a great experience for the students and the community and the Summer of Code will be useful to us. You have this link uh, where the slide will be present, all these links, and uh, you can try it. That's it. <laughs> so we have uh, 10, 20 minutes, uh, 10, 15 minutes left for any question. If you have any question for a specific projects or the uh, management in general, feel free to ask them. Is it working? <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Uh, Christian Perrier talking. Uh, it's more a comment first and then a question. Uh, as a comment, I would like to enhance the amazing work done by Arthur, particularly, in animating this Summer of Code. I've been watching this from the outside, in the mailing list, etc., etc., and I think, and probably the, all, all other people who animated this in the past year will uh, approve, this has been the best animated Summer of Code in Debian ever, so I think Arthur deserves a particular thank you from all of us, all of Debian, for this amazing work he, he has been doing all along this Summer of Code, and he will be doing all along this Summer of Code. So thank you, Arthur, thank you very much. I think he deserves a special applause for that. <laughs> you. And actually, the question is very simple. Arthur, will Will you be running as a Summer of Code an, um, animator next year? Uh, except if I'm dead, I expect, expect to still be here, yeah. So that will be a great Summer of Code. Thank you. Thanks. Um, while I haven't participated in the Debian Summer of Code, I have 
Um, I mean, the Google Summer Code in Debian, I have done it in other projects. And if you could back up a slide or two, you had, um, yeah, that one. Um, I wonder what you could tell me about, um, are you looking to get students to contribute their um, code uh, once they've completed it, or are you hoping to let them, to get them involved in the project and committing it to revision control inside the project while they're working on it? Because I've had some, I had some experiences with students who did a great job, but then it never actually got in. And I think that if they're actually working in revision control the whole way along, it's helpful. So I wonder if you could go through some of the projects and just give the status of that. Uh. So at the beginning of the project, what we requested from students and their mentors this year you hear me, uh, is to provide us our RSS feed of uh, their commit logs. So we have RSS feeds of uh, most projects that can actually provide one. Uh, some projects are not very uh, uh, ready to provide RSS feed because they work in individual packages and so on. Uh, but for the most part, we did uh, a much better effort this year to integrate them uh, live. Uh, most students are working in the VCS uh, of their respective project, either on the trunk or on a branch. And uh, we had all projects be hosted on Debian infrastructure. We, uh, we specifically asked for the VCS to not be hosted on stuff like GitHub or particular personal server so that we know where they are at the end of the summer. And uh, we made great effort also to uh, notify any people that is involved with work related to each project so we don't have any incidents like last year where one project just uh, sent uh, to the maintainer of the package one big diff and that couldn't be integrated because of conflicting work. I uh, hope that we don't have any incident like this this year. Any other question? Anyone has an idea of projects that he would like to have done next year? I hope you have. <laughs> 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 well, great. Uh, we'll finish a little in advance. 